We have quite a, an exciting panel here. The first I would like to introduce is Mr. Oliver de Dermeyer, who is the chairman and CEO of Tao uh, Investment Management. I'll right uh, there put the question to uh, Oliver to introduce what they've been doing in the uh, value uh, chain and the global supply chain fin uh, financing. Please. Thanks a lot, John Lee. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, so, Tau Investment Management is a private equity firm that's focused on transforming global supply chains and actually has been built for that sole purpose. Uh, so my perspective to this is perhaps a little bit differently because we look uh, primarily at global sectors that are laden with inefficiencies, are underbanked by private equity, and can be transformed with a very activist and systematic approach to transforming these supply chains. So uh, talking about, as Annabelle mentioned, integrated solutions, uh, we've been looking early on at pretty much every low-tech manufacturing industry that is labor-intensive, uh, is usually undercapitalized and has labor and environmental issues leading to workplace disasters and so on. So all of the industries, usually private equity would never go to. So uh, we looked at garment manufacturing, we looked at toy manufacturing, furniture manufacturing, consumer electronics, but always with a view, how about if somebody would really invest at scale and in a serial subsector investing, manner into these suppliers in developing markets, upgrade them, modernize them, help them actually build the factories of the future, and at the same time plug them back into the supply chains of the Western buyers. Because when you look at big US European corporations, uh, they actually need not only the race to the bottom in terms of wages, but what they really need is better suppliers, safer suppliers, more reliable suppliers, less suppliers that they can work with. But in a lot of industries, they don't want to invest in these suppliers. So one of the first industries we're tackling and that we're currently focusing on and have done a lot of work over the last one and a half years on is the garment manufacturing industry. It's quite interesting when I think about Africa right now uh, because obviously the garment industry is very much dominated in Asia from a manufacturing point of view. But there's a lot of talk and a lot of pressure uh, to build up capacity in places like Ethiopia and whatsoever. And I think there's a huge potential here if you do it right. And uh, the fascinating thing is when you look at garment manufacturing as a pretty good first step on the ladder out of poverty for millions of people in places like Bangladesh, Vietnam, Cambodia, earlier on in China, um, a lot of good things happened, but obviously a lot of bumps in the road ultimately leading to tragedies like Rana Plaza, ultimately leading uh, to all the disasters on the workplace and environmental side that are not sustainable. So now when you look at an industry like that uh, uh, with a global sector perspective and you actually build up the relationships with all these brands and retailers, which we have been doing uh, with 50 of them in the US and in Europe, you understand what they really need and you understand how you can actually de-risk your investments because you can secure the, the demand side. Um, what's, what's interesting, uh, and, and I think that's very relevant in the Africa context is uh, and, and what I would encourage anybody who thinks about garment, textile, leather, uh, and other low-tech manufacturing industries as a way to create employment at scale, uh, I would strongly advise not to go down uh, the route of race to the bottom of the barrel of wages, just because you can deliver right now at half the minimum wage as Bangladesh, because ultimately that's not even relevant. When you look at the details of all of this, uh, uh, staff turnover in certain factories in that sector is 8% per month. In good factories, it's actually 2% per month. So when you bridge that and you get it down from 8 to 2%, you can actually double wages and you still have a lower labor cost. A lot of that is true for energy efficiencies, cost savings and water and so on. So just a more systemic solution, integrated solution in a lot of these industries, I think would put Africa and, and uh, the, the employment creation uh, here on a much better track. Thank you. Thank you. Doing business in Africa. You can't afford to be without Africa Investor.